Uh, good afternoon or good morning uh, to all of you, depending on where you're joining us from. And uh, really thank you for taking the time out of your day today to spend an hour with us. We hope that this is going to be a rich learning session for you, but uh, we know that it will also be some great learning for us as well. I'd like to start uh, our session today by acknowledging the land that our office is located on in Toronto, Ontario. We acknowledge that we are hosted on the lands of the Mississaugas of the Anishinaabe, the Haudenosaunee Confederacy, and the Wendat. We also recognize the enduring presence of all First Nations, Métis, and Inuit peoples. My name is Melissa Sheldrick, and I am pleased to be your host for today. I'm going to turn it over to Carolyn Hoffman, uh, President and CEO of ISMP Canada, and she can tell you a little bit about our organization. Carolyn? Thank you, Melissa. And thank you for bringing this great group together to have a, a very important dialogue with us. On behalf of ISMP Canada, we really appreciate you taking the time to be here today. ISMP Canada is an independent, not-for-profit national organization, and we're dedicated to preventing harm from medication. Our vision is zero preventable harm from medications, which is a very major goal, as I'm sure you know. And we've been doing that for over 20 years. And we do that by working with people like you and other great partners to look at what's happening wrong in the system, what are potential risks in the system, and then recommending what can be done both for consumers and providers to improve the safety of the system. And we relentlessly advocate for safe medication practices. Thank you so much. Here's a, a slide with uh, our panel today, and I'd just like to take a moment to introduce uh, everyone to you. So I'm Melissa Sheldrick, and you've just heard from Carolyn. Uh, we also have Manuel Escoto from the Canadian Donation and Transplantation Research Program with us, and Alice Watt from our ISMP Canada team, who's a hospital pharmacist and also a medication safety specialist. Uh, for ISMP Canada. We also have uh, Rajiv, who is our amazing technical host, and he is busy working behind the scenes. As Rajiv mentioned at the outset, please use the Q&A function to ask any questions throughout the presentation. Uh, we will be taking the time to answer them uh, at the end of the webinar. We wanted to share some goals of the webinar with you and, and one of them is to explore the concepts of medication safety and what that means for you who rely on medications for your health and well-being. We want to share our work in safety and error prevention. Together with our colleagues at CDTRP, we'd like to learn from you how we can support your medication safety. And finally, as we would like to learn more, we're going to invite you to join us for a more focused discussion uh, in the coming weeks, which I will speak to uh, in a little while. So I have a question for you. Have you ever experienced a medication error? And before you put anything in the chat box or the Q&A, uh, I just want you to think about that for a minute you might be unsure what a medication error actually is, and that's okay, because we're at our starting point here. But based on what you think, uh, we'd like you to answer. And so Rajiv is going to launch the first of a few Zoom polls in just a second. If you've never used Zoom, don't worry. Uh, in a moment, there's a poll function that will pop up on your screen, and you just have to choose between yes, no, or I'm not sure. And all answers are anonymous, so don't worry about being right or wrong. So in thinking about, have you ever experienced a medication error? Rajiv, could you launch the poll, please? So you can just click on your answer there and we'll give it a minute. Okay. So you can see that there's a mix of answers. Uh, unfortunately, many of you have experienced an error. Um, I'm pleased to see that you recognize it as an error and I'm not sure that's okay because we're going to really delve into what a medication error is 
And so you might have a better idea of what that looks like as we proceed through the uh, as we proceed through the uh, webinar. Okay, thank you. Did you know medication errors occur in all health sectors and even at home? Did you know that patients, families, and consumers may feel hesitant to speak up when something goes wrong with their medications? They often don't know where or how to share their perspective about a medication error. You're gonna hear a lot about consumer voice and patient voice and the importance of that in being an active member of a healthcare team as we go through the information that we present today. Medications are the most common treatment intervention used in healthcare globally, and when used safety, they support the health and well being of patients. Uh, however, despite their best intentions of healthcare providers and healthcare systems, medication, medications can be a part of patient safety incidents. And so the Canadian Patient Safety Institute, with input from ISMP Canada and other stakeholders, have come up with this definition as freedom from preventable harm with medication use. Medication safety issues can impact health outcomes, length of stay in healthcare facility, readmission rates to hospital, and overall cost to Canada's healthcare system. Some of you maybe are not sure about what exactly is a medication error. Well, quite simply, it's a mistake that happens with the medication. So an example could be that uh, you receive someone else's medication from the pharmacy, or you are given the wrong dose of a medication that was prescribed for you. Thankfully, severe harm from errors is rare, but we want to prevent all errors, whether or not they cause harm. And I would like to help you differentiate between a medication error and a side effect. So uh, an error is not a side effect. It's not a reaction or a drug interaction. Um, for example, a rash and or allergic reaction, a side effect can happen at any time. So for example, the doctor prescribes a medication for you and you take it as directed. Maybe you break out into a rash or hives or you get an upset stomach. We call that a side effect, we call it a reaction, um, but it is not an error because you are taking the medication as it was prescribed for you. It could be uncomfortable, it could cause other problems, but there is an important distinction there that uh, we hope you will be able to see. So errors happen for a myriad of reasons. Um, on the surface, it can look like they happen because someone has not done something correctly. However, errors are usually a result of confusing systems or ways of doing things. The words on the right hand side of this screen are a really good example of this type of confusion. Look at the pairs of words on each line. You can see how they look similar but these are pairs of different drugs. It's confusing, right? It's, it's potentially easy to mix up. And that word LASA at the top there, that means look-alike, sound-alike. So these are called look-alike, sound-alike drugs. And that's why you see a mix of upper and lowercase letters to try and help healthcare providers distinguish between them more easily. Uh, ISMP Canada supports the use of this tall man lettering to help healthcare providers minimize the risk of errors with similar drug names. I'm going to turn the slide over to Manuel, CDTRP. Yeah, th thanks, uh, thanks, Melissa, and thanks, of course, everybody for attending today's uh, webinar. You know, and, and when I talked to Melissa and we were kind of collaborating on this, you know, to me it was almost, um, it was an easy decision. It's like, yes, we have to collaborate on this because this is something that is very important and very relevant to transplant recipients. Now, I'm here wearing two hats. I am the CD therapy representative on the call, but I'm also a kidney transplant recipient. And speaking as a kidney transplant recipient and pulling from that lived experience, you know, I know how important my medication is. You know, I know I have to take it when they tell me to take it, the amount, the right amount of dosage, I cannot miss. You know, we cannot miss uh, uh, our medication and, you know, the, 
the, the quotes that are up here, you know, give it a little bit of an indication as to why it's so important for us as transplant recipients to, to take our medication. And, you know, in, in saying that, you know, there's accountability on, on both sides, you know, in the healthcare system, but also us on patients. So I really here just to say that, um, you know, this is a great tool that Melissa is speaking to, great tools provided by I ISMP. And uh, I'm really looking forward to the discussion afterwards because I think it's very, very critical for us as patients to really engage in the work that ISMP is doing. So with that, I'll, I'll throw it back to you, Melissa. Thank you so much. Um, as patient and family advisor at ISMP Canada, I'm a strong advocate for, for our voices. And uh, thank you for sharing that experience with us. I'll share my experience uh, with medication error now. Uh, this is my story. This is a photo of me and my little boy, Andrew. And in 2016, uh, we lost him to a medication error at the age of eight. Andrew was diagnosed with a sleep disorder for which he was prescribed tryptophan uh, daily before bed. And tryptophan is an amino acid, um, but it came in big chalky tablets that he was unable to swallow. And so we took his medication to a compounding pharmacy. Um, now, before, before this, I had no idea what a compounding pharmacy is. Uh, this is a place where they, they change the way a medication is delivered um, for special for special reasons, for unique reasons. And so many children have compounded medications as uh, these formulas are not necessarily available to us. So the compounding pharmacy turned Andrew's tryptophan into a liquid and he would take it every night before bed and uh, we would pick up the refill every couple of weeks. And so we picked up the refill uh, one Saturday in March of 2016 and, and I gave him his dose and and then he didn't wake up the next morning and um, we didn't know for four and a half months uh, what had even happened to Andrew until we were told that an error had been made and there was in fact no tryptophan in his bottle at all. It was a very powerful muscle relaxant called baclofen um, that they had mistakenly filled to the same concentration as Andrew's tryptophan. So at that point, um, among other things, it made me really start to look into medication errors and I'd never even heard of this possibility happening before and what did this look like and how prevalent was it? And I, I came to realize that it was fairly common that, that not many people were severely harmed or, or tragically died from a medication error, but errors themselves were fairly common and at that time, there was um, very little mechanism for reporting medication errors by community pharmacists. Um, only Nova Scotia at the time had a program. And so that's where I put my energy and my advocacy work to encourage uh, all Canadian community pharmacists to report to um, a third party to collect these errors. And ISMP Canada works really hard to work with community pharmacists across this country to collect that data so that we know where the problems are and we, we can see where the gaps are so that we can do what we do best, which is learn and then action to try and prevent these same kinds of errors from happening again. And I'm proud to say that we have five, five provinces in this country that now report uh, errors and ISMP Canada holds a national repository. And so we collect all of this data so that we can see um, the bigger picture of what's happening to Canadians from across the country. So reporting of errors um, became very important to me and it drives the work that I do. And I'm so grateful to be able to work with dedicated colleagues at ISMP Canada who hold the same vision and goals as I do to continuously improve medication safety across this country. And, and that's why having these kinds of webinars are so powerful for us, so important, because when we come together, when we collaborate, we move that goal further ahead more cohesively and, um, 
and together and, and we reach more Canadians. So again, thank you all of you for, uh, for joining us today. In 2010, um, ISMP Canada began to collect error reports from consumers because it's not just about collecting medication error reports from doctors and nurses and pharmacists, but patients and, and consumers and, and Canadians who use medications are critical voices to showing us what's happening out there. You remember in the beginning of this webinar, I mentioned that medication errors also happen in the home. Well, there's often not a healthcare provider in the home to, uh, to observe what's happening. So we need to hear from uh, all Canadians, whether they are healthcare providers or not. And so we wanted to increase the number of reports that we were getting from Canadians. And so in 2019 and 2020, we set about launching this brand new platform called mederror.ca. And this platform was co-designed with patients and healthcare providers and safety experts from across this country. And we wanted to have a place where Canadians could go to tell us their stories about what's happening with them in their medication journey. And so I'm going to just jump out of my um, PowerPoint here and take you on a little tour of mederror.ca. This is medair.ca. Let me know if you can't see it. I think it should be okay. This is medair.ca and this is the home page that you land on when you type in the URL. And from here, you're given a choice. Uh, you're given a choice to report an error or to report a reaction. We spoke about reactions, the, the allergies, the hives, the stomach upset. And this button, should you click it, will take you to Health Canada's pharmacovigilance site because they are the mechanism that collect um, information about um, reactions and side effects. But we think it's really important that consumers have a place where they can go and they can look at what's the difference and they can really decide where their story fits best. Medair.ca is full of great information that you can access including why report and who rep should report and what else could I do. And I would really encourage you to take some time to explore mederror.ca so that you can see, um, you can learn, continue to learn and share it with friends and families, friends and family. So if you think there has been a medication error, you can simply click on that button and this takes you directly to our medication error um, reporting form. One of our goals when we were designing MedAir was we wanted to make it as, as user-friendly as we possibly could to help consumers get us the information as easily and as succinctly as possible. So there are drop-down menus to support where did the errors happen, um, at what point did the error occur. You can choose all that apply and if you don't know that's okay too, you can click that. Um, we'd like to know the medication name. The red symbol um, identifies that these are required fields. The dosage form and the strength are not required. What type of error occurred? Was it a wrong drug, a wrong dose? I don't know is always an option because sometimes it's not clear what kind of error it was. And then we also ask about the level of harm. And if you're not sure, these question mark boxes will support you to help you determine whether it was mild harm or moderate harm. You see here did not reach the patient. Sometimes a mistake almost happens. For example, if you go to the pharmacy and uh, somebody on the team hands you a bag but the label does not say your name and you catch it and you let them know and they, they bring you the right uh, prescription. We call that a, a near miss sometimes, but it did not reach you. Or it has happened so that um, it, doesn't, it doesn't even get into your hands. The pharmacy realizes it or the doctor realizes it and makes an immediate change. These are also things that we want to hear about. And then we include a free text box for you to tell us what happened in your own words in a de-identified manner. Um, we want to hear from you uh, about your story and your experience. So this gives you the option to be able to tell us that. 
there are many things that you might need to or would like to do uh, after there's an error and so there's options here that you can choose from that applies and the rest are bit some basic information that are not required information but when our team receives your report we try to really understand the picture that you're trying to paint for us and so the more um, non-identifiable information you can give us uh, the better it is for us to really pinpoint where where in the system there was a gap that the error was allowed to pass through and finally should you give us permission to contact you you can leave us your email and name and phone number we will get back to you and we will follow up with you sometimes we have more questions for you and sometimes it allows you to give us some more information and so that's a really nice way for us to be able to connect with consumers and learn more about what exactly happened so like i said we can really get a clear picture of uh, what happened and then once the report is submitted you will get a notification like this with your reference code and uh, again it says if you provided your contact information we will be in touch with you so I would encourage you to go and have a look uh, after we're done here at medera.ca learn some more share it with the people who are in your community we know that you rely on medication to keep you well and inevitably an error is likely to happen so we want you to just really be prepared from that and then that allows us to know um, you know how we can further support you So after an error has occurred, what, what can you do? Um, the most important thing for you to do is to get the medical support if needed. Uh, as I said, sometimes it does cause serious harm and uh, we would encourage you to seek, uh, seek uh, support from a doctor, a paramedic, a nurse, whatever it is that you need in that moment. But also you can follow up with your prescriber you can um, input it into medair.ca and you can talk to your pharmacist. And we hear from uh, many patients who have done this, who have followed up with the pharmacist and have had really great conversations with the pharmacist, pharmacy team about plans to prevent from recurrence and what, what can be done. And one of the messages that we like to um, to share with consumers is about speaking up. You have a very unique perspective about your medication journey that no one else has. Patients with lived experience have that lens that can't be replaced by any healthcare worker. And so that's a really important part of your health journey and health team. You are a shared decision maker in um, in your treatment plans and so we want you to really have conversations with your health team around you so that you can work to have as safe a medication journey as possible and you can expect a pharmacist or a prescriber to take the time to really investigate what happened um, talk to them about how they will prevent a similar uh, error from happening and um, you can offer your ideas. Feel free to offer your ideas uh, because sometimes, uh, sometimes we patients with lived experience have ideas that may be unique or outside the box that haven't been thought of before. And those are really important places to start. As I mentioned from the errors that we receive, we take what we've learned and we share it. So this is these are two examples of our consumer newsletters that are published approximately 10 times per year. And most of the time, they're a direct result of consumer reported errors. In each newsletter, we write about the report, uh, what we've done, and then we develop tips and recommendations to patients on how to stay safe with their medications. 
Again, you know, we really believe that you have an important role in your medication safety, and we want to be able to give you that support to be active members of your health team. After the reporting and the learning comes in, then we as a team take action. And here are some of the ways that we take action from the reports that we receive. We might approach a manufacturer to suggest a change. We recently heard a report of a child who ingested uh, some amoxicillin because there was no child resistant cap on the bottle. And so we worked uh, with the manufacturer to help them um, secure, secure, so to speak, a new packaging plan for their bottles to prevent the same kind of error from recurring. We might suggest safer ways for healthcare provider, providers to handle medications. ISMP Canada publishes safety bulletins specifically designed for healthcare providers and many times uh, these, again, also are a result of errors that are coming in. And we can make these recommendations and suggestions for them to make changes that are within their control, within their organization, to be able to prevent a recurrence of errors. We can support you with information about medication safety. We can identify special projects from errors that have been reported. And we can collaborate with Health Canada to try and prevent recurrence. We often have different projects with Health Canada. Um, namely, we've done a lot of work with labeling and packaging of uh, prescription and non-prescription medications. And so Health Canada is a great collaborator of ours as we work to keep Canadians safe. So you can see that it's really a multi-pronged and a collaborative approach. And the more we work together, the safer we, the safer landscape we can provide for Canadians. Safemedicationuse.ca is our consumer facing um, website at ISMP Canada. It has many newsletters and resources that you can access and use at no cost. And I'm going to stop sharing my screen again and take you on a little tour of safemedicationuse.ca. Okay, there we go. This is the homepage of safemedicationuse.ca. It is uh, part of the ISMP Canada family of uh, websites, and this is dedicated to our consumer population. You can see here there are four tabs at the top. The report and error tab will take you directly to mederror.ca, as will this tab here. Um, report an error, it will take you directly to medair.ca as well. We have some information about us, there are some news headlines, uh, our Twitter feed is at the bottom, and then very prominently displayed on the home page is our latest newsletter. You can see it's that time again, back to school. Um, this one is about keeping kids safe with severe allergies. And also a, a new resource that we've recently published, which is called the five questions to ask about my medicine. This is a, a pediatric facing uh, resource for kids to learn about asking questions about their uh, medicine when they see their doctor or their uh, pharmacist. So this highlights some of the work that we are doing and have recently released. Under, under our newsletters tab, we have the thumbnails, the photos here of our newsletters from 2021 and 2020. And you can see under each one, the PDF is available in English and in French. It is there for you to download. There are many different topics uh, here for you to look through. Um, once we go down past 2020, the newsletter list continues all the way down to 2010, and we leave those there because sometimes information 
uh, is long lasting. For example, safe disposal of medications. The, the, uh, that newsletter, I think, first appeared in 2011 or 2010, but taking old and expired medications back to the pharmacy is a message that is always important. So have a look through these, um, through these newsletters and see which ones uh, will be helpful to you in your medication journey. And one thing you can do is you can be part of this community and you can actually sign up here to receive this newsletter um, into your inbox when it is delivered. And like I said, it's about 10 times per year. So every, every other month or so a new newsletter will come in. So I'd encourage you to take the time to travel to safemedicationuse.ca and have a look at those newsletters. And then finally in the resources tab, there's all kinds of medication safety resources here for you to uh, peruse and to look through. So I would encourage you to take the time to do so. And always, if you have questions, we can be reached at info at ismpcanada.ca if you have any questions or if you are looking for something in particular. Okay. Let's go back to, we also have, as I'm pulling up my PowerPoint here, we also have a YouTube channel uh, that you, that we place um, many of our webinars and um, other resources uh, for you to look at and watch. So if you just go to YouTube and you search ISMP Canada, you will find that and all of our information uh, and videos there as well. Okay, so now it's time to test your knowledge. And again, all the answers are anonymous, so just make your best guess. And in a moment, a question will appear on the screen and good news, it's multiple choice. After the question appears, Rajiv will launch the Zoom poll and then you can answer. And then we'll have a look at the answer together. You see, I'm a teacher by background. I taught for uh, over 13 years. So this is, this is my, my quiz for you as, as the kids are hopefully heading back to school. Okay, is it a medication error? I received someone else's medication from the pharmacy. Yes, no, or maybe. So go ahead and fill in the question, fill in the poll. I received someone else's medication from the pharmacy. Okay, we'll just wait another minute or so. Uh, Melissa, I am sharing the results. Oh, you are. Okay, perfect. Okay, so Yes, six out of 86% of you responded that yes, it is a an error. And yes, it is. Sometimes people receive someone else's medication, even though their name is on the package. So always check your medications when you pick them up at the pharmacy and before you take them home. Some people have their medications delivered to their home. It's important that you check the labels um, before you actually take the medication to ensure that it is your name on it and uh, that it is for you. Okay, great. Let's go to the next one. I broke out in a rash from a new medication that the doctor prescribed me. I took it according to the directions given by the doctor and the pharmacist. Is this a medication error? Yes, no, or maybe. Okay, let's have a look at the answer. No, it's not a medication error. 
A medication can cause a reaction or a side effect as we uh, talked about earlier on, uh, even if it's prescribed and filled and taken correctly. So it's, but it's still really important to talk to your health team if you experience an unexpected reaction right away. It's important for them to have that information. The doctor said I was getting my medication in pill form, but the pharmacy gave me a liquid. Is it a medication error? Yes, no, or maybe. Okay, lots of different ideas about this one. Yes, it is a medication error. It's possible that the doctor gave you inaccurate information. It's also possible that the pharmacy misread the prescription. Again, this is a great opportunity for you to speak to your pharmacist about anything that you're unsure of um, at any time. If, if, if you think that you've understood the instructions and you get home and you're not sure, call your pharmacist and speak to your pharmacist so that you have the most accurate and up-to-date information that you can possibly have. The doctor told me my dose was 50 milligrams and to take one per day, but these pills are only 25 milligrams. Is it a medication error? Yes, no, or maybe. Rajiv, I don't see the poll. Um, I'm just, there? it's, I'm trying to start it. It's not launching. Okay. Uh, so maybe we can get the results in the chat box. Okay. So in the chat box, is it a medication error? The doctor told me my dose was 50 milligrams and to take one per day, but these pills are only 25 milligrams. What do you think? We say that yes, this it's possible that the doctor gave you some inaccurate information. It's also possible that the pharmacy misread the prescription. Again, speak to the pharmacist about anything you're unsure of. And I think this is the last one. I'm having trouble breathing after taking my medication. I think I took the right medication, but I'm not sure. Is it an error? Yes, no, or maybe. So for this question as well, we'll get everyone to post their answer into the chat box. Okay. Maybe. The answer is maybe for this one. It could be an, an unanticipated reaction or a side effect to the medication at the dose that the doctor prescribed. It could also be the wrong dose or it could be the wrong medication. Do not take any more of the medication and uh, speak to your doctor or pharmacist right away. Okay, quiz time's over. Thank you for your active participation. We want to help by giving you some tips to stay safe with medication. One of the most important ways for you to do so, um, particularly if you, if you have a host of medications that you take, is to keep an up-to-date list. And that should include vitamins, creams, um, natural health products, non-prescription medications. Keep Keeping that list uh, with the dosages with you at all times is really important to share with a health team. Uh, one way that you can do that is through an app called the My MedRec app that you see there on the left-hand side. This is an app that is supported by ISMP Canada. It's available for Apple and Android. The uh, QR code there, you can scan with your uh, phone and it'll take you to 
the website uh, to so that you can download the app to your phone. It is a very secure app. All of the information is not stored in the cloud. It's stored on your phone and you can store your whole family's records in all in one place. Your immunizations, all of all of those different things that are there. So that's a really important uh, way for you to keep uh, everything in one place. And before taking any new medicine, check with your pharmacist to make sure that it won't interact with something else you are taking. They are medication experts and they will be able to tell you um, any potential uh, interactions. Don't be afraid to speak up if you think you are about to receive the wrong medication. Uh, be sure you're comfortable with all the information before taking any medication. Sometimes we see that the pharmacy is really busy and it looks like there's no time for anything, but I want to encourage you, um, despite that, take the time to speak to the pharmacist and ask all the questions until you're comfortable with your medication. It's really important to do so. You could be at the doctor's office and sometimes the doctor is rushed but do take the time to uh, let them know uh, your concerns and your questions. And always check your medications before leaving the pharmacy or before taking them if they're delivered to your home. Make sure you have an opportunity to speak to the pharmacist, to ask questions and to listen to the important information that they have to share with you. And if you have any concerns um, to speak up. So let's stay connected. Um, you can visit safemedicationuse.ca and subscribe to our newsletters so you can learn more about medication safety. Please report your medication errors and near misses to mederror.ca and encourage your friends and family members to do the same. We want to hear from you. We want to hear your stories and your experiences with your medications so that we can learn more. And we're on social media. Our consumer facing social media accounts on Twitter and Facebook um, at Safe Med Use on Twitter and Medication Safety on Facebook. You can follow us there. Sometimes when we receive air reports, um, we make social media posts out of them. That's another way that we can share what we've learned with Canadians on fairly, fairly quickly and succinctly is to share it on social media and then engage with Canadians in that way. So you can uh, look us up and follow us there. Early on in the webinar, I spoke about a focus group and we would like to learn more about the donation and transplantation community and how we can support you in your medication journey. And so we would like to host a focus group for up to 10 participants to hear from you directly. It would be an hour to an hour and a half and we'd really like to take a deeper dive into your community and find out how we might support you in your medication journey. We want to learn from you. Um, Rajiv is going to launch a Zoom poll and it's anonymous to see the interest in a focus group. We're not going to share the results of this poll with the group. Uh, it's for us to gauge the interest, but you can also email me for more information or to indicate your interest. Is that poll working, Rajiv? Um, unfortunately, it's not working, Melissa. Okay, okay. So. that's okay. You can indicate in the chat box if you're comfortable, uh, if you would like to be involved in a focus group, or you can email me confidentially, melissa.sheldrick at ismpcanada.ca, and you can let me know in that way. Um, this is a really a great opportunity for learning for us to find out more about, uh, about the kind of support that we can give. Questions, questions, right? I said I was a teacher. Uh, when's a teacher, always a teacher. So my question for you, my final question for you is, um, do you feel that you are better informed about medication safety and the possibility of medication errors after our webinar today? Is this information that you think is applicable to you in, in your medication journey? And you know, do, do you feel like you now have a bit of a, a toolkit to help you 
as you go to the pharmacy um, and as you pick up medications and as you take them. Once the webinar has ended, you should receive a survey about today's webinar and we hope that uh, you will give us your feedback uh, so that we can continuously improve ourselves and uh, reach can all different kinds of Canadians. So if you would take the time to do that, I would uh, be really appreciative of that. Okay, and I would like to uh, first of all thank our panel for uh, supporting this webinar today for the collaborative work um, between ISMP Canada and CDTRP. Uh, thank you, Rajiv, for uh, managing the webinar today. And I would really like to thank all of you for taking time out of your busy, busy days um, as this month of August winds to an end. But I would like to open up and give an opportunity for questions and conversations at this time. Melissa, it's Carolyn, and mm -hmm. um, we did have a few questions come in confidentially that um, Alice answered beautifully, uh, but behind the scenes. Right. And I was just wondering, uh, the first question was around specific effects of medications and what would be a good source or a place to go to be able to know whether a medication would cause harm to organs, let's say, or, or some other kind of harm. And Alice, uh, you recommended a website? Yes, um, thank you very much, Michael, for your question. Um, unfortunately, I, I'm not an expert in um, sort of the long-term effects of the medicines that you had um, stated, but um, the website that I shared is a Health Canada website where you can search the database of all reported side effects that have been reported by either healthcare providers or patients. And um, if that might be of interest, you can put in the medicines cell sept and uh, tacrolimus to see if um, any of those side effects have been reported. You can you can talk to your health team team about it and 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 kind of uh, open that discussion with them. Does that help? If you have any questions about it, please uh, you, know, you can type it in. Yeah, and then uh, another question came in about uh, what I would say is a medication, potentially a medication error, where an emergency department prescribed a medication and the transplant team said that's not safe for the patient. And that's a classic example of a system factor that is going on that, um, you know, we'd be really interested in hearing if you're comfortable in the chat box, how often you do experience something like that. But it's, it's a very specialized area for, for care of transplant patients and, uh, uh, and the disconnect can happen between services, you know, between an emergency department, ED physician, et cetera, and a transplant team. And, and uh, so trying to improve that, reporting it is one way that would improve that circumstance. And you can go, as Alice had said, you can go to the hospital um, and share with the patient experience team or whatever mechanism they have for complaints or concerns that uh, there's a disconnect here. There's a transplant team that knows the latest and, and the ED team needed a few more steps to ensure safety. And uh, that's a great way. Reporting to us helps us know of the system error to try and learn from that. Uh, but also sharing it with the ED um, or asking the patient experience team to share with the ED. In our experience, many times when healthcare providers are approached proactively about an experience, you know, this happened to me, I just want to make sure it doesn't mm -hmm. happen to another patient, um, they, they rise to the occasion. You know, but unfortunately, our system isn't designed for that kind of uh, proactive sharing and learning. And so we have to help it. We have to help that along in one way or another. So I thought that was a really good point. That's great. Thanks so much, everybody. And again, I really appreciate your time today. And I'm just going to pop my, my email address into the chat box one more time. So if you are interested in the focus group, please just send me a message. Thank you so much for your time today. Uh, I am uh, grateful that you took the time out today and I hope that uh, the learning that you take with you will help you stay safe with your medication. Have a great rest of your day and, uh, and week.
Thanks, everybody.